Hello and welcome to the Learning Mindset Podcast. My name is Frank and I'm glad that you're here. Today we're going to take a look at metacognition and I'm going to share with you a tool that I'm using with my own students to help them develop their own sense of metacognition and reach better learning outcomes. Or at least that's what I'm hoping is going to happen. It's still a work in progress so I'll share you some of the challenges that I've had with this tool as well and uh, not to keep you in suspense, the tool that I'm using is something called a learning journal. Now, metacognition is a very active area of research when it comes to learning, and it's really how do we learn, and specifically, how do individuals make a sense of the world, how do individuals understand their own learning. And as instructors, as teachers, one of the things that we want to do is not only identify how our students learn, the ways that they best learn, but we also want to be able to have them identify the way that they best learn. And if we bring students into a learning scenario, whatever it is, a classroom or a course, one of the challenges that we have is they come into that classroom with a number of preconceived learnings, preconceived ideas, and pre, uh, sort of preloaded ways of learning. Now, by identifying how they learn, what we can do is have them adapt their learning style. And I try to stay away from the term learning style, but they can adapt them the way that they learn best, or they can adapt their previous learning into the new subject area. And this metacognitive activity, thinking about how we think, is a very powerful way to achieve better learning outcomes. There's a number of research articles that have been done that show that this occurs at a very young age and it continues throughout our life, that we're actually always learning new things, learning um, as we learn new things, we have new ways to learn new, new things, so on and so forth. So One of the challenges we have in in the way I teach the uh, post-secondary environment is that we often have an atomic course structure. Now, if you're in the younger grades, if you're in that K to 8 area where you may have a class of students for the entire day, then introducing metacognition, although I don't know if I you know, tell kindergartens that they're doing metacognition. But if you're if you're with a class all day long and you're able to work with that group, then what you're able to do is introduce metacognition activities such as the learning journal that I'm about to describe. It becomes a little more difficult if you're in a high school environment or if you're in a post-secondary environment or, you know, even if you're just doing some training for corporate type of scenarios, it becomes a bit more difficult because what ends up happening is every Everything becomes very atomic. I just mentioned that a few minutes ago, but what do I mean by atomic? Well, let's take a a college scenario. If I'm taking a physics course, and I'm taking a biology course, and I'm taking a chemistry course, so three very popular topics in the STEM area, if I'm taking those courses, how do they relate to each other? Now, I'm not going to sort of look at the educational system and say, you know, it's failing, there's all sorts of problems with it. I'm not saying it's perfect, but, you know, it is traditional in some sense, and some of those traditions are tried and true, and some of those traditions maybe need a little bit of a shake-up. Well, this is one area where I believe that they do need a little bit of a shake-up, but changing the way the courses are taught is more challenging than changing the way that students interact with the material that they they find. So let me go into more detail on that. So the idea behind this is that if I'm taking those three courses, chemistry, biology, and physics, how do they relate to each other? We know in the real world that they absolutely relate to each other, but how do we create a sense on the student's part of how they relate to each other? And more specifically, how do we create a, an engine of you know, self-efficacy within the student to ensure that they're able to learn those subjects in a way that works best for them? So for example, if we have somebody who's very good at learning biology, why can't we take that same learning approach when it comes to physics? so that they know who they are, they create that self-awareness, and they apply that to the new learning. Now, the way that I've done this with students is by introducing something called a learning journal. I'm a very fortunate instructor in that I work with cohorts of students more than I work with individual classes of students. So in my program, it's a post-secondary graduate, it's a post-secondary program. So all of my students will come into the program. It's a four-month program that uh, runs intensively. It's all day long every day for four months 
and I'm with the students probably about 60 to 70 percent of that program, maybe as high as 80 percent of that program. What this does is it affords me the luxury of being able to spend a couple of days at the very beginning of the program doing something I call the All About You lecture. Now, a huge part of the All About You lecture and workshop, really, because I have them do a number of activities, is that in that time frame, I'm able to introduce them to the resources that are available to them. So they understand things like how to conduct research in a library. They understand things like, you know, where's the bookstore? So simple things, an orientation, if you would. But I go a little deeper than just an orientation to facilities and an orientation to resources. One of the things I do in that lecture is I also orient the students towards the process of learning itself, towards metacognition. And the way that I've been doing that for the, especially since we've started teaching remotely, the way that I've been doing that for the past couple of years is by introducing students early on into something called a learning journal. And the idea behind the learning journal is that it's a self-reflective document where students can reflect back on what they learned that day. Now, I do need to spend a bit more time ensuring that students are using their learning journal. Like any type of new experience, it's something that requires a little bit of effort to make sure it's happening. But the idea behind it is at the end of each day, students should make a list of the different topics that were covered that day. But they should go a little beyond that. Not just traditional notes, this is what we studied in school today. They should take a few moments to reflect upon what subjects did they find easy to learn. What subjects did they find more difficult to learn? And then go yet another step, the metacognitive step, of saying, why was it challenging to learn this topic? Why did I find this topic easy? And the idea is that through that reflection, my goal, and what I hope will turn out from these learning journals, is that the students will start to develop a sense of how they learn best. So topics that at one point may have been challenging for them could then become easier to learn because they identify their own unique way of learning things. Now, one of the things I also always have my students do, absolutely, is there's a Coursera course that's called Learning How to Learn. It's a fantastic course. Um, it's, uh, was, it's one of the number one courses on Coursera, and it's something that I even had my own kids do, so I've, I've challenged my own kids to do that. And it's, uh, it's part of a, it's, there's a book as well uh, called Learning How to Learn, and uh, the, the author of that book, uh, Barbara Oakley, she also has written a book for instructors, which is called Uncommon Sense Teaching. If you're watching this podcast on YouTube, then I'll link down below so that you can find that book, and if you're listening to it while you're at the gym, good for you for working out. I think that's very smart. I'm proud of you. So the idea is that uh, these, these resources are not about a specific subject unless you consider the subject to be yourself. So by understanding and learning how to learn or by understanding the brain science behind how people learn, what we're able to do is we're able to leverage that self-awareness into better learning outcomes. And Really what I look for is creating within that learning journal an opportunity for reflection, an opportunity for mindfulness around the learning process, and a way of creating, if you would, just a plain journal so that there's an artifact that's created of the learning journey. So it's my hope that within the four-month period that the students spend with me, that if I can encourage them to use that learning journal, that they will be able to be in a position where they'll be able to continue to reflect on their own learning, and they'll be able to do things like, you know, as they're learning, say, here's an interesting topic, I don't have time for that now, that's something I can do a little bit later. Now, for some of you, this may seem to be very similar to a, a very popular concept right now called the second brain, and I'll do a podcast on the second brain as well. This isn't quite the same as creating a second brain, although the learning journal and a second brain system could be combined together in order to have a really holistic view of not just, uh, you know, how you learn, but also the resources that you want to explore later and a way of sort of creating up, uh, creating a little of cognitive space in your brain. So one of the things that, uh, that they say is if you have an idea in your head, it stays in your head. But if you have an idea on a piece of paper, you've cleared your mind, but you haven't lost the idea. So the idea of by taking some digital or even a, a analog note of the things in your head, you're freeing your head to do the work that you want it to do. 
which is being creative and, and all that good stuff. And you're still capturing those ideas. You haven't lost anything. So I guess I've just summarized the second brain concept. Or actually, if, um, if you look at the book, Getting Things Done, it's very similar. That's a productivity book. I'm digressing. The idea, though, behind the learning journal is that it promotes that, that met, uh, metacognition. So it, it promotes the idea of understanding how we learn. And then what we're able to do with that is we're able to go in and we're able to return to that journal so that we can better um, understand how we did learn to have future learning. Now, for younger children, this could be a fun thing. A, a tool that, for example, I might use for the older students would be something like Microsoft OneNote. If you check out my YouTube channel, Learning and Technology with Frank, that's where I show you how to actually use technology for learning and teaching and, and, and better improvement outcomes in those areas, where I'll actually demonstrate the technology. It's pretty hard to do an audio demonstration of a technical tool. So Learning and Technology with Frank, I show you how to use OneNote. And OneNote is one of the tools that I use for the learning journal with older students. It's a great place, and if I'm using something like a Microsoft Teams environment, I can actually incorporate OneNote directly into the Teams environment, so I can actually have a teacher notebook, I can have a shared class notebook, and I can have individual notebooks that are just shared between myself and a student. And that would work all the way back to, you know, maybe as, as low as grade 8, grade 7, any time where the students are comfortable with technology. It's also something that you can cycle uh, parents into seeing those journals as well. For younger kids and even older kids, another tool that is useful might be something like Flipgrid. So there's another technical tool. But like I say, if you're interested in technology and teaching, then you can you can check out my channel and uh, where I do visual type of, of teaching there. So, but the idea behind the learning journal, the challenges that I found with it was that I didn't spend a lot of time in the first few intakes where I used the learning journal, uh, enforcing that the students were using them. I, you know, I, I set up the importance of the learning journal. I discussed with the students how that metacognitive activity will really help them. And I will have to say, I don't know how many of them actually took advantage of that. When things get busy, anything that we haven't done in the past tends to sort of flow out. We stop doing it. So if we're a traditional learner, especially with my students being postgrads, a lot of times those uh, students will say, you know what, I'm just going to fall back to an old pattern tell me what I need to learn, I will go and complete the tasks and then do a test so that I can see that I've learned it. Now, the big surprise with me is I don't really do a lot of multiple choice testing and those types of things. I'll do that to keep the students on track a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll keep them on. Have a sip of water here. So I'll do a little bit of testing to keep the students on track a little bit, but I really like them to do activities where they're having to produce an artifact of some sort, such as a presentation. Anyways, that aside, the one notes that I created for the students initially, uh, their level of use on those one notes is something that in the future, I'm hoping to spend a little bit more time tracking and specifically potentially setting some gates along the way, especially at the beginning, to sort of try to form the habit of reflecting on the learning. So that what I can do is maybe meet with the students in one-on-ones, especially uh, with, with them using remote teaching. I can have a little remote meeting with them one-on-one -on -one, and I can say, look, where are you with your learning journal? Have you thought about how you're learning? How can I best support you in your learning? What's your learning methodology? What are some of the things that you're struggling with? All good teaching methodologies for sure, but having that learning artifact, that, that journal, is something that we can then use as a launching point for those types of discussions. Now, the other thing that I'm going to suggest with a learning journal, and this might be even more applicable to younger students, but it would also apply to my postgrads, and that is have some prompts. So potentially each day for the first week, you would put in some prompts for the learning journal and then ask the students to complete the answers to those learning prompts and then maybe make it into a twice weekly and then make, me in, make it into a weekly event where you're providing the prompts, but you're still encouraging them to have a daily reflective learning journal. So that's, that's metacognition, the idea of thinking about how we learn. There's definitely more to that. There's a lot of research that's being done on the benefits of being self-aware, I suppose. Uh, there's a lot to be said about clearing the mind, and that maybe goes into the realm of the second brain. Certainly something where I think things like mindfulness come into play. So we have things like relaxation techniques, and we have things like, uh, you know, meditation and such. Now with mindfulness, that's a great example. If we have a journal 
where we sort of mark down the benefits of the mindfulness activities, we can see whether they're having a good effect on us or not. I'd be very interested in your thoughts on mindfulness in learning journals and the idea of, you know, what do you think about metacognition? If you're watching this on the YouTube podcast, I guess it's a vlog or I don't even know what they're called nowadays. But anyways, I put this, I put this blog or this podcast onto YouTube as a visual. It's just me talking into a microphone. If you're listening to this on the go, I hope you'll visit my website, uh, which is uh, uh, learning, <clears throat> learningmindset.ca. I had to think about my own website, learningmindset.ca, where you can see uh, some information, or you can visit franksclass.ca, which is really my blog. Anyways, thank you so much for listening. We'll see you in the next, or we'll talk to you in the next podcast. This is my first podcast episode, so give me a break if it's a little bit choppy. We'll see how things go as we progress. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you'll subscribe and share the podcast with others.